welcome back uh, for another Let's Play. Small housekeeping note, uh, the next one is going to be a, a double feature. Uh, so two episodes coming out at once, which I've done, you know, a couple times before. I'm going to try to get them both out tomorrow, but if I don't, you know, they're coming. <laughs> Alright, and here we are at the river at... wait a minute. Where the hell's the music? What the heck? There's no music. Damn. I guess the, um... Whatever song was playing here uh, got lost and, you know, switching over to a new computer, actually. This is a new, you know, new-ish computer. I got it about a year ago. Um, I must have just lost a few of these things. Oh, that's the... I mean, at least it didn't crash. <laughs> that would have been really bad. But, yeah, I got no music for this dungeon. That's kind of lame. Uh, so, somebody starts singing. Rolling, rolling, rolling on the river. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't even remember what song I had here. Um, I don't remember this dungeon very well, to be honest. It's not very long. It's one of those incidental things. Um, but this is actually a pretty complex puzzle for, you know, me at this point in time. Um, yeah, she's talking that she's going to use the keys to move that log, but of course, it doesn't make sense to them. Um, this was before we started having fairies explain all the puzzles. That works a lot better. Um, but yeah, so, you, you know, I'm hitting the button, uh, the arrow key, and having Nova move this log over with her water magic so that we can jump on it. And, uh, I know it seems kind of basic, but the amount of code that you do, like event code and stuff, just for something as simple as this is, is a lot, actually. I remember this took me a long time. And it, would, it was always kind of buggy anyway. Hopefully we don't get any of that. Sometimes you weren't able to jump on it, and then you were just stuck. But it looks like it's uh, it's behaving so far, so that's good. Um, Alright, so we'll go down here. And then we're going to hit these switches. You know, it's funny, because uh, if you look at Master of the Wind, um, there really aren't as many dungeons as this game. But they're all... the dungeons that are in there are all very big and elaborate. Um, whereas in this game, you have some, you know, large dungeons. But then you've got just these ones that are only like, you know, one screen or two, a little bit of wandering, not that many puzzles. But there's a lot of them, so you always kind of feel like, you know, you're doing something. So it's just interesting to contrast um, that approach, whereas Master of the Wind would have, you know, a really big dungeon that could take you hours, depending on how much you wanted to do in there, if you wanted to find all the secret stuff and everything. Um, and then, you know, you'd have a lot of story afterwards. Um, so it's just it's interesting, the difference. Um, this game does get pretty heavy on story later. I mean, it's heavy now, but there's no cutscenes that are, you know, overly long, really. Um, at least not now. I think towards the end there are some that, that are quite long. But, um, alright, so we got three logs here. Or two, actually. We're trying to line up uh, the two that are closer. Whoops. Um, the two that are closer to uh, the, the one that's farthest away, so we can create a little log bridge here. And, uh,. All right, so let's go. We're good with that. And then, uh, okay, I think we're almost done. We're getting very close to the end. And yeah, there we go. Oh, hey, I wonder what those guys are gonna do. Step on a trap. And then um, they talk quite a bit about it. And then we've got these scouts coming out to, you know, <laughs> uh, try and stop them. Arius tries to pretend he's Lysander again, but it doesn't work, because Lysander keeps meeting these guys first and telling them the situation. Um, so it's kind of funny, you know, you, kept think you keep thinking that'll work at some point, somebody really thinks he's Lysander, but... So far, no dice. Man, I wish we had some music here. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. What the hell happened? Why would only, like, that song be gone, and not other ones? I don't friggin' know. The least we're out of here. Um, there we go. Ah, there we go. So good to hear that weird little MIDI from Echo the Dolphin again. Um, alright, so, we're, this is turns this uh, homeland, the, the plains of Vertulia. Uh, it's a city that's referenced often in Master of the Wind, but you don't really get to visit it. There's no uh, really reason to do so within the story. But we'll get to see it now, although it's older, and it probably doesn't look like it does, you know, by the time you get to Master of the Wind. Um, where it's become more developed and busy, and it's seen as a very, uh, you know, populated city. 
this it's a little more kind of backwoods-ish. A lot of old traditions that are still in play. I'm sorry about that. Um, Alright, so we're about to go in there. Oh, well, after this fight, I guess. Uh, now we just got random groups of scouts prowling around here. And as we've seen before, uh, these towns are always interesting. You never know what these NPCs are going to say. But we're in a town that's, you know, kind of under galley control. There's some tension. And, uh, you know, now we're going to see the ramifications of that. You know, even having a Minotaur around is kind of dangerous in situations like this. So this is the council hallway. And uh, we're going to meet Turnus' father, uh, Lat Latinus. And there's kind of a joke behind all of this, is that Turnus' name is from the Aeneid. You know, that, that ancient poem by Virgil. Um, you might have read it in your, you know, high school or whatever, especially if you took Latin class. Um, and so when you come to this area, all these supporting characters, you know, Turnus' family and some of his old friends, uh, they're, they all have names from the Aeneid as well. And they were all related to Turnus in the Aeneid somehow. Now Turnus, in the Aeneid, Turnus was a villain. And Aeneas was the guy who was from Troy who survived, you know, the, the fall of Troy from, you know, the Iliad and the Odyssey. It's almost like a sequel to those poems. And he left to um, go to Italy and settle it and, you know, start the Roman Empire. But Turnus was the leader of the, um, the tribe that lived on, you know, lived in Italy at the time. And Aeneas got there and basically said, sorry, you know, uh, friggin' Jupiter said this is my land now, so take a hike. And uh, Turnus didn't want that, so he, he fought, and he led the effort to get rid of Aeneas and stop the uh, colonization. Um, but since this was a, a Roman poem, it was just, like, outrageous propaganda. Just nobody ever asked questions like, you know, why should, um, why should these people have to give up their land just because some, like, you know, guy from Troy comes and says he's all, like, you know, in charge now. But that never really, uh, never really comes up because it's just blatant, one-sided propaganda meant to, you know, tell Romans that they're awesome. Um, a bit like Fox News, actually. I couldn't resist, sorry. Um, actually, I'm not sorry, but, you know, I'm sorry for going on a tangent. But there's no actual character named Aeneas here. That would be, um, a little too on the nose, I think. Um, so, but uh, a lot of these characters are from the Aeneid. And he's talking to an old friend. Um, it's kind of implied that they might have been, uh, you know, involved at some point in the past. But now um, she's kind of involved with uh, his childhood rival, this guy Drancy's, who we'll meet later. And Drancy's has been leading the effort to sort of um, ally Rutal with, uh, with Guardia. Um... So, the, now, Rutil's run by a city council. Um, there's six of them, or there used to be six of them, but one uh, died suddenly. And uh, so now there's five of them, so a simple majority will make all the decisions. And, um, you know, and then the whole sort of, uh, you know, political process in Rutil is very important to this story arc um, because, you know, they're going to try and stop Gallia's... Uh, take over this town with, um, you know, through democratic means, you know, f by using the system, rather than just going in and, like, fighting everybody and making them leave, um, which I'm sure what Turnus would like to do, but uh, it's going to be more complicated than that. And you, you'll come across to these NPCs, and they have very different, um, you know, feelings about this. Some of them love it, they think it's going to make Rutul, you know, this popular place, and others just think it's appalling because of what... Uh, you know, what Galia does. Um, so, this guy's advising me not to buy any of the shields, which is an interesting little twist for, you know, a game like this. Um, well, that's creepy. Uh, like Nova says. So, we're gonna get some stuff. We got this amber plate armor, which is very good. Which I bet is pretty cool looking, too. Maybe, like, plate armor with, like, some kind of, like, uh, golden sheen or something on it. And we got a few of these helmets, but not the shield. I was advised not to buy them. And, alright, so we'll... Quit. Boy, that kind of cleaned me out. Armor's expensive. But, like, you know, I would keep running away from all the battles, so that's probably not helping. Um. Alright. Let's just 
get this done. Yeah, okay, I gotta do the helmets or something. I guess they're right, right, pretty good. Um, okay, so we'll go... I think there's a lot of, like, characters in this, like, real-life characters. Well, not real life, but, like, characters from other works of uh, fiction. Um, Alright, so we'll go. That's, that's what I'd say. I'm cutting out there. Um, yeah, this barn here. But I'm not gonna go out back there. That looks pretty crowded. Um, right, let's see. So we're just gonna wander town, see what's up. Hopefully I won't be too appalled by any of these NPCs. <laughs> you never know, though. Um, alright, so I guess it's pretty standard stuff. Yeah, Crayusa is a council member who is who died. That'll, that'll be helpful later. Um, again, you know, oh, another name from the Aeneid. I think just about every name in this story arc is from the Aeneid. Um, I was like, you know, flipping through that book <laughs> and finding names. Um, and uh, so now we're going to talk to a very wacky NPC that was designed by my little brother. And uh, it summons a horde of chickens. I mean, and they're everywhere. It's it's crazy. I mean, I can walk around this whole town, and there'd just be like nonstop chickens. But we can get rid of them. There's a um, there's a grave that you hid here. Oh, this guy's in my way. Come on. Where is it? There we go. And then they're gone. I guess it was a precursor to the curse of the frogs. And there's Agent Smith. I think. I think that's supposed to be who that is. Um. And then we get just some kids. I think that big guy is Arnold. I think he's even got like a Arnold uh, soundbite when you talk to him. Let's find out. How are you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good though. I like that. Um, we got some construction over here. And uh, what's in this house? Right, okay. Let me in the house already. Oh, jeez, it's the third time I've used that. So this time it was uh, it was sped up. So that's you know that's kind of funny. And uh, let's see. All right, now we'll uh oh it's <laughs> I wish that was satire, but it's not. People actually said that. Um, we're probably getting to a point in the game when the the Iraq War was starting, and it was before you know the for it was before the fact that that war was bullshit became common knowledge um, and I cannot even tell you how many times I heard that if you don't like it get out right like I'm just gonna like leave the country just because I don't you know agree with a particular uh, military action I mean give me a break it's a load of shit um, okay so let's turn the bar here and uh, okay, I think that that woman you see later much later and something else I don't know. I'm, I'm rambling. I'm sorry about that. Um, all right, so we're just hanging out here. Doesn't look like there's anything that important. At least maybe there's a goodie. Yeah, yeah there we go. So I suppose. Uh, but this man, these towns are big, huh? I mean, this is like pretty much as big as Boreal. It just takes you forever to um, you know, check it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A new guy followed us here, I guess. Um, all right, so why don't we go check out? Oh, there we go, a weapon shop. Yeah, let's check this out. Um, right, that's a Satoshi Kone thing. You know, the movie Millennium Actress. Um, Alright. <laughs> oh, that blade is named after a character in Naruto. I think I was watching it around this time. Um, and it's probably some of the music from that show, I think, also pops up uh, in this game. Which is a little odd. I mean, there was a little bit of Match of the Wind, too. Some of Finley's music. But the thing is, with the Naruto music, and I didn't really, I don't know, I didn't really consider this at the time, was that, that, that all that music is so distinctly Japanese, that it's just, it's almost a distraction. Um, and that just, I don't know, that didn't bother me at the time, because I was like, yeah, Naruto music is awesome. But um, now it would. Now I tend to, you know, gravitate more, like, towards New Agey atmosphere kind of stuff. Like the music for this town, actually. I and mean, I think this is the perfect kind of song. It just kind of is nice background music. It doesn't, uh, it's not a distraction. And now we'll uh, bring this to an end quick. And oh, look at that. I can save. About time. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.